Uh, so my name is uh, Ole, and um, I've been doing Scala since 2010, since I was seven years old. So, uh, yeah. so I, I, I just uh, look so old because, you know, I've been doing Scala for too long. So, and uh, that guy can understand me as well. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, don't make me think. Uh, that's uh, an interesting uh, statement. Uh, there was even a book a guy wrote, a whole book about this, right? And this was a plan for, for to, to do for you guys to answer a question, you know, for, um, you know, to send you uh, a Kahoot, you know, what is Kahoot, right? It's kind of questions and answers. And this was supposed to be a cloud work, you know, asking you what guys do you think, you know, it would fit nicely into my presentation. The problem is we don't have connection here, so we will just skip over this. Uh, I'll assume that uh, you all answered what I wanted to, uh, and uh, you all said, okay, yeah, this is a nice subject, actually. That's exactly what we miss here. So that's the same thing. That's the third question. Um, think. Don't make me think. People like to think. So and there are several reasons why people like to think. Um, you know, did you hear about this a great thinker? And then we we like to to bring us this one in, into our daily lives, you know. And philosophy. Did you, did you hear my philosophy of coding? No, I especially in functional programming. You know, my philosophy is different, right? So people like uh, thinking, like. Uh, Puzzling, right? Puzzle games, right? When when we go to from 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 the early days that we go to kindergarten and nursery, we are learned to be given puzzles, right? Brain teasers. Have you ever been to an interview where they give you brain teasers? Oh, I uh, I'm not sure if I love those, right? But yeah, the, these are our things, right? So uh, and probably the most thing that influences us and me was my dad, you know, he used to say, think with your brain, uh, he would say head. And he would say, like, implying that I'm thinking with something, some other part of my body. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so since we are uh, children, yeah, we, we like to think. And, and because we like to think, we kind of complicate things, right? Uh, and uh, there are some reasons why people complicate things. No knowledge display, you know? uh, I remember I've been in an interview and the guy was shouting for the manager to hear him how, how wise he was, you know? And the problem was really complicated, you know? And obviously he was smart enough to know the problem because he prepared it, right? Uh, but yeah, people sometimes like to complicate things to show they are smarter than others. Uh, Sometimes it's the opposite, right? They just fear if it's a thing is too simple, you know, it just uh, uh, they will not be taken seriously, right? Uh, lack of clarity, task avoidance, right? They complicate things just not to get to a solution, resistance to change. Uh, and this statement, uh, do you remember, guys, uh, in the early days of Scala, that was 2001, right? So that was before I was born. Uh, but uh, Scala really started to go mainstream like around 2010, where TypeSafe company, you know, light band company in the beginning was. Uh, so I see, you know, people, should, you know, saying yes, yes. Sir. So uh, thank you guys. I don't feel so old, you know, when <laughs> when saying this thing. But yeah, uh, so it was TypeSafe, and they started promoting this, right? And and you know what was their marketing thing? Scala is not for the average developer, right? And I was like, hmm, you know what? I, um, I don't want to be an average developer, you know? That's why I'm doing Scala, you know? And you know what? Uh, a lot of people like me join Scala because they don't want to be average developers. And, and, and their consequence was accordingly, right? We, we wrote, uh, wrote code uh, not for the average developers, you know? So I used to be so proud when I write, write code and no one understands and they call me, oh, can you please explain me what, what's here, you know? They look like, like the guy in the beginning, you know? 
we didn't smoke before starting drinking our coal. Uh, yeah, so that, that was kind of how, how I started uh, Scala. I've been doing Java, it was too simple for me. I wanted something a bit more complicated for my life. Uh, but yeah, people, uh, the, pro uh, the problem is here that people also like to pretend that simple thing, uh, complex things are simple, you know? This, these are just two guys, you know? Uh, anyone from Denmark here? Oh, sorry. Anyone from Denmark here? No? Okay, then I can tell this job. <laughs> so, uh, the problem is this is also recorded. Okay, so, uh, it's good that we work remotely, so I won't get out from the next house, so this will be my last presentation. Right? But yes, I, I, when I lived in Norway, you know, the neighbors love each other, right? And, and uh, they, they say that Danish, you know, they, they have to speak English to understand each other, right? Because the, there are so many dialects, Danish dialects, right? And uh, there are two guys who, 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 who pretend to understand each other. One guy goes and asking something, the other guy, oh, you can read on his face that he has no clue what the other guy is saying. Right? So sometimes in the coding we do the same. You know? I was literally in meetings like that, you know? One guy was so smart, so elevated. You know, English is not my native right, language. But he used those old English words, you know, uh, explaining some code. And you could see on the face of people that, that they didn't understand anything about what he was saying. And then it's like, do you know what I mean? And people were like, yeah. So you could see on their face they couldn't understand. So sometimes we, we do coding like that, right? But uh, there are some smart people who are not afraid of doing simple things, you know? So, and uh, I like this quote, so saying, uh, any intelligent fool can make things bigger and more complex, and it takes a touch of a genius uh, and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. So opposite direction of the complex would be simple, right? Um, so simple is genius, right? Uh, is it a surprise? Yeah. Uh, did you ever heard someone say, you know, this thing is so complex, it's so complicated, no one understands it. It's simply genius. That's it. It's not making sense, right? So it's complex things are not genius, right? When, when it comes to code. And the coding is the business of writing complex things in simple terms, not other way around. Uh, and this was... Um, Simple is also obvious, right? So when, when you look things, it's like, yeah, how couldn't I think about this before, right? The, this is a, actually a direct quote from this uh, book, which is about uh, web design, but it also applies to coding, right? So, and, uh, and the guy says, if uh, the things are not obvious, then you, you shouldn't take those things seriously, right? Uh, especially when it comes to coding and design. Uh, simple is sophisticated, right? So remember that one of the reasons people didn't want to do simple things is because they would think that it's lack of sophistication. So here is one guy, I think you know this guy, right? Uh, Leonardo da Vinci. He's saying simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Um, I'm probably preaching to the choir now, right? But first of all, I'm preaching to myself. Sometimes I have also tendency to make. So simple is good. Now this was a bad choice of, <laughs> I think you cannot read things there. But uh, yeah, uh, I remember an interview and I, I told the manager, you know, after I had this discovery that simple is good, you know, there was a couple of years. So you know what, my, uh, the other managers here, you know, so, uh, I shouldn't say that this joke if there are managers here, but yeah. Uh, the managers are very smart people, but I like managers who did or never did coding, right? Because I use them showing the code. Do you understand what this code is saying? And, and, the, and the guy in the interview was uh, asking me, but isn't programming, isn't programming like a specialized skill like doctors? Uh, and I didn't answer this, but then I thought afterwards, I said, you know what, but I tend to like more the doctors that can explain what they are doing. Yeah. So, uh, and I wouldn't go to the doctor to cut me, you know, in half if uh, he doesn't explain why he needs to do that, right? 
sometimes we do this with coding. So um, uh, this one is so I have something which is coming in my slide. Uh, so yeah, uh, simple is good. Uh, now, why simple is important? You, you know all of these things, right? I'll just skip them quickly, right? Uh, readable, maintainable, testable, adaptable, uh, you can change code, less time consuming. Uh, now, this is probably the most interesting thing. And I think we all know all of these things, right? But just as a recap, how to write simpler code, right? We focus on readability, right? Uh, and there is one. Uh, yeah, all of these uh, things we know, but we break down complex problems into simple, right? We avoid deep nesting, this deep nesting. I remember a guy, you know, he would stay like t till 10 o'clock, uh, like every every day for, for a couple of weeks. I was like, why are you spending so much time? You know what? Because the director asked me to look into some C++ code, right? He was a Java developer. And if I can figure it out, it will give me a promotion, right? I was like, uh, you know, there was pretty, pretty deep nesting things. Like they, they had like 15 it else's, right, uh, in there. And guess what? Do you think the guys got a promotion? Yeah, I won't say it because I'm on camera, but he changed the job afterwards. So uh, simple is, uh, is possible, right? Uh, and I established the following guys, and I'll spend a bit of time of, on the guys. We probably know all of these uh, um, things, right, from the very high level. Uh, simplicity versus capability, you know, if a language has more capability, it's naturally uh, uh, a bit more complex. But we should still strive, like Scala, right? Scala is both functional and object-oriented, right? And uh, it doesn't make sense for people which come from functional background, and it also doesn't make sense for people which come from <laughs> from the object-oriented program, right? So, uh, um, other principles like these things, you know, like keep it stupid simple, right? So, what I want to show is that all the things, most of the uh, principles are to making things simple. Right? Um, and I like the, um, so yeah, I won't go into details this because it probably does, I'm pretty sure you know uh, more than me or every single of this. Uh, the code, code for, the, for the maintainer. The, the thing which helps me keep the code simple is this principle, saying you should think about the maintainer, right? And you should think about the him being a violent psychopath <laughs> who knows your address. So, uh, if uh, th th this was the principle helping me, you know, most, right? Uh, doing simple things, right? Don't make me think is another. You have uh, functional programming principles which help us making things simpler, right? Uh, you have uh, object-oriented principles, uh, which we uh, all know. Uh, and one thing. One, another reason why we tend to complicate things is, is because it's hard to make things simple, right? Uh, and uh, it, it's easy to, to copy-paste a, a bunch of code, right? Uh, which at the beginning might make sense, but then it's less. Uh, and it takes a lot of more time to, to write well-thought, simple, concise code. Uh, and, uh, you know, You've seen these statistics, right? When, when, when people are judged by how many lines of code they write, right? This, uh, in context of simplicity, this doesn't make sense because uh, you can write a lot of code pretty, pretty fast, pretty complex, right? And it takes a lot of time to write simple code. Uh, simple code is worth it. Uh, you have the satisfaction, you know, uh, the, you know, if you see a guy, you know, watching at the screen, uh, smiling so uh, it's probably he's not looking at a picture of a nice lady he's looking how beautiful his code is you know so uh, uh, that's
that's that's a satisfaction you know that you cannot get anywhere else. Uh, it, it, it and one of the important things it minimizes the chance of that violent psychopath knocking on the door by midnight after he's trying to fix a bug. Uh, and this, you, you know, all of these D's, what they mean, right? GDD, uh, like domain driven design, test driven development, right? BDD, behavior driven development, uh, another D is. Do you know what MDD is? No. Uh, so I, I didn't know it before when a, a colleague of mine said, you know, I was looking at his code and said, you know, we need to spend a bit time of, of uh, making it simple. I said, no, 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 this is MDD. But you know, I didn't want to look stupid, you know, I didn't ask him what is MDD. You know? And then I Googled it and I couldn't find it. So I go, what is MDD? I was like, MDD is an important thing, you know, to keep you employed. It's mortgage driven development. Right? So, you write code that no one understands, right? And then the company has to keep you because if they fire you, then they will look for people who want promotion, right? Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, so short term is, is probably good to write complex things. Long term, it's not. And uh, I think this is, uh, uh, I remember was working for a company which got bought, right? Uh, oh my God. Those guys were writing some complex thing. And from that company, all the teams were taken to the new company except the team which was doing MDD. So this is career damage as well, uh, if you don't, uh, if you make things, uh, uh, people think. Yeah, and this is a, a book, right? And the point is clear. We all know the point, right? I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir now. But uh, it, it, it makes sense and it, it pays off to make things simpler. Uh, yeah, and the bottom line is like, if the code requires too much thinking from an observer, then it's uh, probably, it's uh, time to be simplified. Um, any questions? have a long time to pay mortgages. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get inspiration for this talk? Sorry? How did you get inspiration for this talk? Uh, reading my code that I wrote 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was well, that complicated? Yeah, it was bad, you know? So I, I quit smoking when I was five, you know? <laughs> so I stole a cigarette uh, and I, from my dad's uh, car. And I, I went to the garden and I was smoking, talking to myself. I was about to die, you know, and I promised to myself I will never smoke again, you know, I, until I start reading my code, you know, for 10 years ago, right? I have a big temptation to start smoking, but I didn't give it. So, thank you for the question. Okay, so how do you find Scala in context of that? How do you find Scala mm -hmm. in context of that? Yeah, so one of the questions in the beginning, you know, in Kahoot, which I wanted to ask you was, uh, what would you change in Scala, right? Uh, I, I was hoping to get this answer from you guys, right? So Scala, I love Scala, uh, I joined Scala because it was complex, right? That was Scala is not for the average developer, right? That was my pride, right? But then as I became older, I'm 17 now, so, uh, I, I started to, 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 to appreciate simple things, right? And I must say, uh, Scala is not the simplest thing. Right? So Scala is not the simple thing, but we can make it simple. Right? If you spend a bit more time uh, writing it, you, you can write it. Uh, uh, simple. That's, that's my experience. I, I hope I don't get stoned when I get uh, back home. My car is, by the way, very close here, guys. Don't attempt to do anything to me after I get out. But yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs>